The Mindset Shift Presence, Positive Imaging by Norman Vincent Peale. This book abstract is intended to provide just a glimpse of this wonderful book with the hope that you may like to read the original book at leisure and enjoy its real beauty. Introduction The concept is a form of mental activity called imaging. It consists of vividly picturing in your subconscious mind, a desired goal or objective, and holding that image until it sinks into your subconscious mind, where it releases great untapped energies. It works best when combined with a strong religious faith, backed by prayer and seemingly illogical technique of giving thanks for the benefits before they are received. When this concept is applied steadily and systematically, it solves problems, strengthens personalities, improves health, and greatly enhances the chances of success in any kind of endeavor. Chapter 1. Imaging what it is and how it works. It is based on the principle that there is a deep tendency in human nature to ultimately become precisely like that which we imagine. An image formed and held tenaciously in the conscious mind will pass presently, by a process of mental osmosis, into the unconscious mind. And when it is accepted firmly in the unconscious, the individual will strongly tend to have it. One person suffering from cancer began imaging armies of healing white blood cells in his body cascading down from his shoulders, sweeping through his veins, attacking the malignant cells. and destroying them. He did it hundreds of times a day. Very soon he was free of cancer. At one early stage, a magazine guideposts was in the danger of closing down due to bad finances. A meeting of directors was called to review the situation. After listening, one lady told the gathering, you lack subscribers, equipment, capital because you have been thinking in terms of lack you must start imaging prosperity instead. She asked them to visualize subscribers increasing from 40,000 to 100,000, and thank God for the same. They prayed together for the same. God, rather than changing situations, changes people, and changed people change situations. Along with imaging, discipline, Determination, patience, and persistence are also essential to reach the goal. Chapter 2, Imaging a Life-Changing Force In the younger days, I had a huge inferiority complex and hence was miserable in public speaking. After one such poor showing, my professor called and said, How long are you going to be like this? a scared rabbit afraid of the sound of your own voice? You probably because yourself by thinking that you are naturally shy. Well, you better change yourself now, before it is too late. I was angry, resentful, and hurt, but most of all I was frightened because I knew that it was true. I prayed the deepest, most desperate prayer of my whole life. Please help me, please change me. Please take away this awful shyness. Let me see myself as someone who can do great things in life. Give me the strength and confidence I need. As I continued imaging and praying on these lines, I improved dramatically. General Roosevelt told me, if you think you can, or somebody who believes in you thinks you can, why, then you can. When our church was in debt of $55,000, and conditions were precarious, I thought that it was impossible to raise that much amount, and perhaps we might just be able to raise $20,000. I went to a smart grocer friend thinking he might contribute something and tell me how to get the rest. After listening to me, he said that since we were not planning to raise the entire debt amount, he won't give me anything, but pray with me. 
In the prayer he said, Lord, we have to raise some money, but this person doesn't know the first things about doing things in a big way. He has little faith. If he is going to raise only $20,000, I won't give him a nickel, but if he will believe he can raise the whole $55,000, I will give him the first $5,000. Amen. I was excited, and asked him where we would get the rest. He told me to go to a doctor who has the financial capability, although he will say no first. Let us pray and visualize that he does. I had lots of doubts about all this prayer and imaging. So I did it half-heartedly. When I got the money, and went to tell him excitedly, he told me that he was knowing that my prayers were half-hearted. He prayed and imaged continuously about the positive outcome. He said, you are never defeated until you accept the image of defeat. A French psychologist who advised people to say to themselves constantly, every day in every way I am getting better and better. In whatever you do, act as if it were impossible to fail. There are moments of discouragement, of course. But it is odd how, almost always, someone steps forward to renew image of better results. After a very bad sermon, I went to a friend for advice. He said nothing to get despondent about. Don't focus on that. Focus on people and the needs they have. That's what it is all about, meeting needs, and helping people. So you just keep on trying. Don't worry if a sermon goes sour now and then. Just reach out and help people, and that church will always be full. Once, on an unusually stormy Sunday, I became agitated thinking that there won't be much audience for my sermon. When I mentioned that to my wife, she said, What's the matter with you? You are always preaching optimism and positive thinking? Now you are just thinking of yourself and whether or not you will have a large audience. Why don't you think about people in those apartment houses? Lonely people, hurting people, people who need the message you have to give them? Why you don't visualize them streaming into the church, bring in their problems, finding solutions? Let's pray about this right here. Let's ask for the church to be full. Let's see it full, and give thanks that it will be full. And, it actually happened exactly that way. Chapter 3, Imaging the Concept that Conquers In my pocket I always carry a card with following five lines. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is. I carry it because the image that invokes is of a loving, caring God which is a perfect antidote to fear, to worry, to anxiety, to just about any problem under the sun. Whenever I am troubled, I take that card out and let it remind me that there is an all-powerful being in the universe who loves me and who is only a prayer away. The more intensely you image it, the happier you are going to be, because you will never feel abandoned or alone. A woman came to a doctor to tell him about the serious condition of her husband because of negativity and bitterness about everything. There was nothing physically wrong with him. He did not believe in God. The doctor told her give him the following treatment at home when he was deep in sleep. At 5 o'clock every morning you get up and sit by your husband and pray for him. Believe that God is there by your husband's side. Image your husband to be a happy, controlled, organized and well. Hold that thought intensely. Think of your prayers as reaching his unconscious mind. At that time in the morning his conscious mind is not resisting and you can get an idea into his unconscious. Visualize him as kindly, cooperative, happy,
creative, and enthusiastic. After many weeks, the change actually happened the way it was imagined. A woman was frightened for her soldier husband in a heavy war zone. I told her baby was not frightened because you are with her, you love her. The baby knows that. You also have to become like a child who knows that God is your Father who loves and protects you. Fear knocked at the door. Faith answered. No one was there. A lady suffering from a terminal cancer had given up the fight when she got a gift tray with inscription Don't Quit. A nurse also told her that she didn't have to die just because doctors say so. This proved to be a turning point for her will to live and fight. She read a book Getting Well Again describing relaxation and imaging techniques for healing. She visualized the drugs in chemotherapy strengthening white cells and destroying the cancer cells located anywhere in the body. A man had his life plagued by all sorts of worries and fears. He visualized during the day and especially at night before falling asleep. The image of his worries and fears, like bubbles, coming from deep within him, rising to the surface and breaking into nothingness. It worked wonders for him. After half a century of helping people in distress, I am convinced of following three things. 1. Every human being has an enormous problem-solving potential built into him slash her. 2. Problems are essential and necessary ingredient of life. 3. Basic tools of problem solving are available to anyone. Here is a simple imaging technique that you may find useful if some stubborn problem is troubling you. Take 30 seconds right now and picture yourself taking command over the problem. Then take three long, deep breaths and exhale slowly after each one. As you take the first one, Say to yourself, I am breathing in confidence, I am breathing out fear. With the second, I am breathing in power, I am breathing out weakness. With the third, I am breathing in victory over my problem, name it, I am breathing out defeat. Chapter 4, Breaking the Fear Barrier Many people have a problem of low self-esteem due deficiency of self-love. Love is an answer to all human ills. But you can't love anyone properly as long as you despise or downgrade yourself. Just imagine yourself as charming, natural, and likable person. Select one of those problems that looms so large in your mind and take some action against it. Emerson said, Do the things you fear and the death of fear is certain. Famous psychologist William James said that we all have a psychological barrier he called the first layer of fatigue. Most of us work and struggle up to this point and then say I am so tired. But he said, beyond this point, there is tremendous power and energy waiting for us, if we will just force ourselves through it. Sometimes a moral transgression haunts us and acts like a splinter causing lots of damage. Face the problem, and get rid of it by admitting the wrong and asking for forgiveness from God. May at times, we consider ourselves inferior by comparing ourselves with someone close to us. The other person may be good, but you are also good and worthy of respect and admiration. Try to find the real cause of your inadequacy. When it is out in the open, it loses its power over you. Be realistic. Some limitations are natural and inevitable. Nobody is best at everything. But image yourself as the best at something. Chapter 5, There is Always an Answer Imaging isn't some kind of Aladdin's lamp that you can rub and have a genie appear and bring you instant riches. It could do a lot of good for you. From what you say, debt is a way of life with you. But obviously it's not a way of life that makes you happy. If you would picture yourself debt-free with intensity and sincerity, 
if you would visualize vividly happiness and peace of mind that solvency would bring you, if you would really make that your aim and give it top priority, you'd move towards that goal and finally achieve it. Some people have a wrong notion that money is evil. To one such person I said, Stop seeing yourself as the helpless victim of an imaginary villain called money. If you personalize money so vehemently and hate it so intensely, you certainly won't ever attract it. Because your unconscious mind will be programmed to repel and reject it. I told her to calm down. Be objective. Stop all this hate business. In solving life's problem, Imaging is only one of the many techniques. Here are how a dozen simple suggestions that seem to be effective. 1. Don't panic. If you find anxiety building up, start imaging peace of mind. The simple act of praying creates an image of your problems being brought to the source of of all wisdom, and that is tremendously reassuring and comforting. Say that I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Repeat these words whenever you feel anxiety is returning. 2. Get organized. Make a complete list of all your debts and essential expenses. Add up all sources of income and see what you can count on. Visualize yourself living within your income with a fraction left over for debt reduction. Paint that image vividly in mind. 3. Be disciplined. Avoid the demon of instant gratification. The demon is happiest when you don't know the true state of your finances, because then he knows you are less likely to apply the brakes. 4. Think. Forget the past. Think of the future. Too much of postmortems can lead to gloomy future predictions. Take stock of positive things and image a positive future with those. Opportunities for money making surround us all the time, it just takes an inquisitive, lively mind, one that expects good things to happen in the future. Some of the assets we totally miss out are our own good health, a loving and understanding spouse, healthy family members, supportive larger family. When I was depressed over inability to pay bills at some stage in life, and asked my wife what we should do. She said we are going to start tithing, I said it was impossible with our finances. She reminded me of the saying in the Bible of God's promise to those who give 10% of their income. Tithing is an act of faith which calms fears and stimulates mind to do something positive to be able to earn more. I realized that I had a small talent of public speaking, and I capitalized on that starting with whatever small opportunities I got. There is an invisible reservoir of abundance in the universe that can be tapped if you will just obey certain spiritual laws. Tithing even when in financial difficulty does just that. Key things to deal with financial difficulties. 1. Don't panic. Fear blocks creativity. Try to be calm, objective, logical, and hopeful. 2. Get organized. Balance your budget by reducing expenses. 3. Be disciplined. Avoid credit card spending until you are debt-free. 4. Think new ideas. Money problems can become assets if it forces you into creative thinking you may strike a vein of gold. 5. Give all you can. It puts you in the stream of abundance in the universe. Chapter 6, Imaging Believe in It One never knows exactly what kind of spark will set a man free. Some good affirmations. 1. I believe that I am always divinely guided. 2. 
I believe that I will always take the right turn of the road. 3. I believe that God will make a way where there was none. Our default imaging is a negative one. The occasional worrier takes affirmative action. The chronic worrier becomes exhausted and confused. The word worry comes from Anglo-Saxon in which it means to choke. And that is what it precisely does. Worry is a habit. It got into our mind because we practiced it. And you can practice it out as well. Put worries in a large basket near an altar and forget it. Lord Rank played a little game to reduce impact of worry. He organized Wednesday Worry Club. He was the sole member. Instead of worrying every day, whenever a worry cropped up he would write it down on a piece of paper and drop it in a box to be worried on Wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m. At that time, he would empty all deposited worries on the table. In going over them, always about 90% had solved by themselves. The rest he put in the box again to be worried about next Wednesday. Another trick employed by the same person was to write down his worries on a paper before returning back from office. After reaching home, he would put it in his mailbox with a prayer Dear Lord, I am giving you my worries. Work on them for me during the night. When I come out in the morning, the problem has not vanished, but now it is no longer on top of me. Rather, I am on top of it. Another good way to break worry patter is to use diversion. When you notice a worry haunting you, do something you enjoy doing for a short break. Sing a song, read a few pages from a book, play a game, go to garden, arrange flowers, buy yourself a present, watch a good movie. The final and best antidote is to image God as a personal friend. Chapter 7, Break Free Some persons enjoy solitude. But so many people suffer from a prison of loneliness. In all these cases the jailer is you. Hence, you are the only person who can open the door to freedom. If you blame others for this you can never be free. You have to change attitudes and it is never too late to do this. Use visualization to imagine yourself as a smiling, attractive person. Imagine inviting a friend for a dinner, having a very good time, and being invited back. Cultivate things desired by friends like playing games, ability to discuss general issues positively, ability to listen, show concern, and lend a helping hand. Start every day with a prayer. The mantra is prayerize, visualize, and actualize. If you do the first two with intensity the third will automatically follow. For overcoming loneliness, the best thing to do is to call someone who is in a similar situation. Reach out and help each other. If you have to be happy in solitude, you have to know yourself and you have to like yourself. Lonely persons have low self-esteem. They turn off people. They are irritable, complaining, and self-centered. Become a person who smiles easily. Check your posture. Stand straight and tall. Show cheerfulness and confidence. Let the conversation be enthusiastic and optimist. Praise people instead of fault finding. Develop a skill of truly paying attention. Basic rule of successful small talk is to inquire about other person's interests. Review your attitude about people in general. Do you really like to be around people? Do you care about them and show them that you care? When you have an overflowing attitude of genuine caring, it creates a state of harmony between you and other people that is irresistible. People feel it instantly, and they always respond. The most common cause of loneliness is inertia and the apathy that comes from not having enough to do. If you are lonely, don't wait for others come and rescue you. 
you have to make the move yourself. Best remedy for loneliness is to feel that God is always with you. Chapter 8, Biggest Steps to Success Imaging can help in three crucial areas. The first is goal setting. Choose your goal, visualize it clearly, and fix a specific date for arriving at it. Put it in writing, writing a goal brings in focus, otherwise it is just a wish. It should be sharp, clear and definite. Just one strong declarative sentence. Make several copies of the same and paste it where you can see at least three times a day. Then it sinks down to all levels of your subconscious mind, unlocking the energies needed to achieve the same. The deadline is extremely important in major as well as minor ambitions. Only you can help yourself by changing your self-image while looking at the future. Put things down in numbers. If you want to reduce weight, write exactly what weight you want and in how many weeks slash months. Hold the image for one minute every morning when you wake up and one minute just before you fall asleep. Ask God for spiritual strength to persevere. Then the dream will actualize itself. The second step is belief the conviction that you are capable of achieving those goals. You should have the unshakable image of yourself succeeding at the goal that you have set yourself. Discard the failure image. A motivational speaker told audience to visualize themselves moving up in the company, receiving promotions, gaining energy and dynamism as went, right up to very top. He said that most of us use only 10% of the powers that we have. Fear of failure holds us back. You can do anything, if you think you can. The third step is to image your success. And the fourth step is to take God as a partner. God stands ready to help you at all the times. He gives quiet but accurate guidance to those who ask for it. He gives determination to the hesitant and courage to the faint-hearted. Faith in God removes tension, fear, worry, and all the negative forces that hold you back from success. At the end of a day, write down worries on a piece of paper, crumple it and throw it in a waste paper basket. Pray to God for His love and care in solving problems. Next day there will surely be another set of problems, but you are fresh, energetic and confident to handle those. Worrying about the problems in the night would have tired you in the morning. Chapter 9, The Mind-Body Connection In the Second World War, a soldier was seriously injured with five bullets. There was not much hope for him. His weight dropped from 192 pounds to 90. He became so weak that he could not stand or walk. Doctors were doing their best, but condition did not improve. Sometimes, to make endless hours pass, he tried to recall happy scenes from the past, athletic triumphs as a boy, scholastic prizes or honors. He would visualize the applause, the pride, happiness on parents' face, satisfaction he felt. While doing this he realized a common pattern in all these, he had a mental picture of the success before it actually happened. He thought that if it could work then for a different reason, it could even work now in his recovery. He started visualizing returning home, driving a car, having a job, having a family. He also began thanking God in advance for turning visions into reality. By doing this repeatedly over a long period, his health started improving to the amazement of his doctors, and he could finally do everything he had dreamt of. Doctors have proved that positive, beautiful thoughts trigger the release of beneficial hormones in the body which help the body heal itself. Your belief about the universe being loving or hostile makes it happen. Basic Keys to Healing, Hope 
faith and truth are the keys. Then you can image recovery which helps healing. A man had a habit of saying every morning that it is going to be a terrific day. When he died at 84 years of age, after autopsy, doctors discovered that he should have died 20 years earlier due to several ailments. How he lived that long was a miracle. Human beings are designed to be healthy, and are supposed to be healthy. Like planes are supposed to be better off flying than being on ground. They are designed that way. We are also designed by God to be healthy, energetic, creative and dynamic people. I used to get a bad cold every February followed by sore throat, severe cough and vocal cords closing up. Few years back, I decided to stop that by imaging myself to be healthy in February and it worked ever since. Since God created us in His own image, His perfection, excellence is built into us. Water can't come out of a faucet unless it is connected by a pipe to a water source. Likewise, we need to connect ourselves to God, the source of all power. The natural tendency of the human body is toward health we are amazingly tough and durable. Chapter 10 Imaging Making It Work The Fatal Maybe Attitude I am getting married, hope it works. I am married, maybe I made a mistake. Most universal sin is selfishness. A couple that prays together stays together. 7 Suggestions for Married Couples for Healthy Relationship 1. Try to have a mature concept of what love really is. 2. Work on communications constantly. Then difficulties can be worked upon when they are molehills, not mountains. 3. Learn how to defer gratification. 4. Take responsibility. You can only change yourself, not others. Occasionally, accept blame, apologize. 5. Learn to compromise. 6. Practice the art of appreciation. Psychologists say that the desire for approval is a strong human trait. 7. Strive to increase the spiritual dimension of your life together. Chapter 11, Reach Out 1. Resist the temptation of being judgmental. 2. Learn to be compassionate. 3. Image the whole problem in terms of reconciliation. 4. Pray for the person who has offended you. It is difficult. Pray to God for strength. Chapter 12, At the Heart of Cyclone Three-stage process for peace. First stage, practice body relaxation. Sag back in chair. Start relaxing every muscle, beginning with your toes. Stretch out legs, flex ankles, try to push your toes right off your feet, and let everything go limp. Let your head fall back. Roll it around so that neck muscles are loosened up. Let each hand fall on your knee and rest there as limp as a wet leaf on a log. Open eyes wide. Pretend invisible weights attached to the eyelids pulling them shut. Imagine a soft, gentle hand lightly touching your face, smoothing the tension lines away. Picture the tension draining out of your body, leaving it calm, peaceful and relaxed. Second stage, relaxation of mind. Imagine sitting against a tree in a forest, with a beautiful lake, and blue hills on the other side. Visualize the sense of a forest, the gentle breeze swaying the trees. The calm waters of lake disturbed occasionally by a leaping fish. The winter sunshine on your face. The peace outside, and the peace inside. 
Third stage, refresh soul by recalling and meditating upon the great passages and great promises from the scriptures. We should be able to summon tranquility whenever we need. Like our weak body muscles need strengthening through regular exercise, we also need to strengthen our faith muscles by systematic training. Collect great passages slash promises in scriptures, carry them with you, and read them whenever you have time. Chapter 13, Act as If For achieving faith, success, happiness, act as if you have faith, success or happiness. Imagine and visualize having these. Believe that it is real. While you are doing it, give thanks to God for that boon. Even when you can't believe it or visualize it completely, still give thanks. Slowly, belief and imagination will become stronger and you will start working towards your objective. A famous musical composer told about his secret for great compositions. When I decide to compose, I pray and thank God that it is accomplished. Then I do it. If it doesn't come the first time, I pray again. Then it comes. When you pray for any sustained length of time, remarkable things happen, especially when your prayers are directed toward the needs of others, not your own needs. One night I woke up at 3 a.m. and could not go back to sleep even after trying everything. I had an important meeting in the morning and it was important for me to be fresh. Then I remembered a prayer technique from a friend for spiritual help. I started visualizing everyone I should pray for. Starting from family members, friends, colleagues, acquaintances, I prayed for all of them one by one, almost 500 persons by name. By 6 a.m. I was feeling happy, joyous, revitalized, and reborn. With this experience, Whenever I feel depressed, I repeat this process. Sometimes, prayers can bring quick solutions as well. Chapter 14, Imaging in Everyday Life Imaging can be used equally effectively for both major and minor things in life. You can use it for everyday problems. One person suffered from insomnia. To overcome this problem, being a lover of flower arrangements, she visualized arranging roses in a beautiful vase. She visualized this in so much detail as if she was actually doing it. The fragrance, the colors, the vase, the room, all looked real. She was such a perfectionist in this that before she could complete it in visualization, she would go back to sleep. Does this kind of dreaming called imaging, guarantee you anything? No, it doesn't, life doesn't hand out ironclad guarantees. But it raises the probabilities so enormously that it is foolish not to take advantage of it. All successful persons use imaging without necessarily realizing it. Great athletes use it constantly. They imagine winning an event with complete details. They know it is even more valuable than physical preparation. Of course, talent, physical capabilities are also very important. But, everything else being almost equal, this gives you an edge over others. You can use this technique to overcome guilt of having done something wrong and asking God to forgive you. Try visualizing a blackboard with a sorry record of mistakes written on it. Then image a shining figure, the Lord Himself, sweeping a sponge across the blackboard, wiping it clean. The Lord has forgiven you for your sins and mistakes. Then forgive yourself, otherwise it will keep haunting you. What this means is that you are visualizing forgiveness and acceptance which brings peace. Picture yourself as confident. 
Are you facing a challenge in your job where you doubt your ability to cope? Image yourself meeting the challenge, solving the problem. And give thanks for the solution in advance. Picture yourself filled with surge of confidence and energy that sweeps away doubts and fears. Image your mind coming up alive with fresh, new energy, crackling with new concepts, teeming with new ideas. A psychiatrist had said that if you relax and call upon your deeper mind, which never forgets anything, your deeper mind will deliver what you need. Before one important seminar I realized that I had forgotten my papers from which I needed some vital information I had completely forgotten. Before the seminar, I sat in a rocking chair backstage and addressed my subconscious mind. I understand that you never forget anything, and everything I ever did, thought, read or heard is stored down inside of you somewhere. I need this information. I know that there is greater capacity in you than what I normally use, and I have not called upon you very often for a special favor. But now, I want this information and want it right away. I have got to have it and I believe that you are going to deliver it to me. After that I sat back and relaxed, and then the information just popped out like a toast from a toaster. Chapter 15, Happiness and Friendship one of the deepest desires of a human being is to be appreciated. Still, very few persons are popular, attractive, charming and helpful. Jesus Christ has said love thy neighbor as yourself. However, you can't do that until you learn to love yourself. You can use imaging to improve. Picture yourself acting in a manner which opposite to your weakness like anger, irritability, due to impatience and exasperation. One person demonstrated in a stormy meeting how to cool himself and others. He took of his jacket, undid his tie, and lay down on the couch. When people inquired whether he was unwell, he answered. I felt that I was getting mad, and I have found out that it is difficult to get mad lying down. He said in a low voice that keeping body relaxed keeps emotions under control. When people complained that they couldn't hear him, he said. You can't argue in whispers. When I get mad, my fingers get tense and very soon I clench my fist. So, I deliberately picture myself with fingers relaxed. Then it is very difficult to get mad. If you practice spiritual patience you can rise above inevitable annoyances. You have to decide who is calling the shots. You are the annoyance. Patience through prayer and quiet attitude is the best way. When someone rubs you the wrong way. You have to learn to have an objective, scientific, dispassionate attitude. We must practice spiritual patience and objective observation. Then you may even help someone instead of getting angry. Jesus Christ said love your enemies, bless them. Pray for them. A businessman wanted to try spiritual practices to feel the power of spirituality. He tried, but was not happy. After some discussion it emerged that he resented and hated his competitors. I told him that he has to love his competitors. I asked him to pray three times a day asking Lord to help those fellows and love these fellows and give them a bigger year in business than he is himself. He was successful in becoming peaceful, but it was not easy and it took a while. Making friends with yourself is the first step. Helping people to think highly of themselves is the next step. Then you won't have to look for friends. They will flock to you. I still remember and love my professor in college who reprimanded me severely and told me to improve performance. I was angry at that time, but then loved him because he saw a better me inside me. He made me perform better, 
which made me feel better and loved him for that. Emerson said, Our chief one in life is someone who shall make us do what we can. That is the job of a friend. Everywhere we find people not living up to the best in themselves. They love their best to be recognized and coaxed out of them. Sometimes, they resist. Another simple way of making friends is to help people not just when they ask for help but also when you see that they need it. A businessman who had the best business in the area shared a secret of his success. He was so very loving and helpful to his customers that they could never think of going to anyone else for what he sold. 4 Steps to Friends and Friendship 1. Examine yourself and get rid of characteristics that alienate people. 2. Make conscious and deliberate attempt to help other people find greater self-esteem. 3. Aid and assist them over rough spots in the road of life. 4. Mimp genuinely love them. Chapter 16, The Most Important Image of All The image that you have of yourself is far more important than anything else. The Bible says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he. Your conviction of success or failure, scarcity or abundance will make it happen. The universe is like a great echo chamber. If you love people, you will get back love. If you sow anger, and hatred, that is what you will reap. If you put others first, everyone will be your friend. How does a person gain and keep a strong, serene, confident concept of himself slash herself? It has twofold answer. You do certain things that enhance and strengthen the image, and you avoid certain things that damage it. The three deadly emotions that rob a person of a normal degree of self-esteem are fear, guilt, and doubt. If any one of them becomes dominant in your life, your self-image is going to suffer. There are ways to neutralize their power. Russian proverb a hammer shatters glass but forges steel. For some person's fear is so great that they lose confidence, and withdraw from life. They no longer believe that they can cope up with hardship, or illness, or economic problems. Others in the same circumstances are not afraid because they have faith in God. They stand firm, look the problem in the eye, and say, in the name of God, I am no longer afraid. Complete trust is most protective and sustaining emotion that a human mind can feel. When small children are afraid of nightmares or thunderstorms they rush to the parents who embraces them. Comforts them with soothing words. They offer them love and support. They don't turn them away, and don't make fun of them. Conquering Guilt If your own conscience condemns you, your self-esteem is bound to be low. Confession, repentance and a promise of forgiveness can help you in overcoming guilt. One champion baseball player who had an outstanding season by his own standards was asked the secret of his success. He said I knew I had to become a positive thinker in the highest form. It's an easy thing to bring out, it depends on the price that you are willing to pay. The inputs to the new philosophy were creative visualization, positive thinking and meditation. I just concentrated better. Instead of hoping to get someone out, I knew I can get him out. It starts with almost bragging to yourself. You have to erase all the negatives and start replacing them with positive. It's almost like brainwashing. You have to relearn how to deal with it physically, psychologically, and emotionally. 8 Ways to a Better Self-Image 1. See yourself as a child of God. It is the greatest antidote for fear. 2. 
stand in front of the mirror and take a good look at yourself. First check your external appearance. Do you look discouraged or defeated? Stand straight and tall. Replace frown with a smile. Change your shabby clothes to smart ones. Your appearance reflects and affects your image. If you improve one, you will begin to improve the other. Then look at the inner person. Do you lack energy and confidence? Admit it if you do. Make assertions that you can improve with God's grace, and pray for normal self-esteem and self-confidence. 3. Decide to trouble your capacity for imaging. 4. Practice what you do well, and then learn from your success. Nothing builds confidence and self-image like the repetition of superior performance. All good athletes don't remember bad performance but the best ones in the past, knowing that memory will help him repeat them in future. If you have a skill everyone has, then seize an opportunity to exercise that skill. 5. Condition your mind with spiritual power principles. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. 6. Sensitize yourself with the beauty and variety and excitement of living. Don't take nature for granted. Get fascinated with the infinite variety. Feel the charm and the mystery of the stars. Be alive to everything around you. 7. Control your emotions. 8. Stay close to God always. Thank you for watching this audiobook summary of Positive Imaging. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more inspiring and educational videos. Don't forget to leave a comment and let us know what you thought of the book. Have a great day!